What is up everyone, your friendly programmer here, back with another video. In this video, I'll be doing a brief crash course on the basic Java concepts you'll need for the remainder of this tutorial series. Now, if you're already an expert in programming in Java, feel free to skip over this video. However, if you're new to Java or just want a quick refresher, then I highly recommend sticking around until the end of this video. With that said, Let's get right into the video. So first, I want to explain the general layout of our project in Eclipse. If you look here to our left, we have the Package Explorer. In here, you can see all the different pro projects that we have in Eclipse. Now inside here, we see our file or our folder called Super Mario Bros. Tutorial. And if you open this up, you'll see we have two folders inside here. One is the JRE system library folder, and the other one is a source folder. Now, the JRE system library basically enables us to access all of our predefined functions in Java. So if we open up our source folder, we can see we have a package here that we created from our last video called com.game.main. And if you open up this package, you can see our game.java file. So these different folders and these different packages are mainly here just to keep our code and our Java files organized. Um, the reason for why we need to organize our files will become more apparent as we scale up our project and as we have more Java files. Next, I want to explain what it means for Java to be an object-oriented programming language. Object-oriented programming means that the way or style that we code in revolves around creating objects. So, we might have an object for our player and our blocks and so on. We can also have objects for more abstract things like our game or our camera. So now let's talk about classes. So objects are created by classes. Classes can be thought of as templates or blueprints, which contain information about objects. That information can be things like variables or functions. For example, our player object may have a variable called health to indicate its health. So we'd want to define our variable called health in the player class. Similarly, our player object may have a function called increment health, which increases its health. So we'd want to define a function called increase health in our player class. Just a bit of terminology, when we refer to variables in a Java class, we say fields and when we refer to functions in a Java class, we call them methods. So here I just wrote out um, a very basic example just to describe what I just talked about. So we have a class here called player and this player class is the template for creating a player object. This player class defines a variable or a field called health and a function or a method called increment health. Now here, we can create an object um, and we create an object called Mario that is a player. And Mario has access to the health variable, and it also has access to this increment health. Now we'll go over some of the most basic concepts in Java. Let's start with a comment. A comment is text that the computer ignores. It is basically used by the programmer to add notes to their code, and it makes it easier to understand complex blocks of code that you might need to reference later in the future. You can see here, there are two different types of comments. One is an inline comment, and we 
the syntax for that is two forward slashes. After the two forward slashes, you can type whatever you want. So this is the comment, hello world. Everything on this line will get ignored by the computer. There's also a multi-line comment, and the syntax for that is a forward slash and then an asterisk. And then the closing is another asterisk and then a forward slash. So you can write whatever we want in here. And all of this will get ignored by, ignored by the computer. And then each line, you need an asterisk. So a forward slash asterisk. And then each line gets an asterisk, and then the closing is an asterisk forward slash. Next, we'll go over data types. So in Java, you're required to specify what the data type of the variable is when you declare the variable. So we'll go over this very basic example right here. So this is the data type, and it's a data type for int. This is the variable name. And we're setting this variable equal to five. And then we have a semicolon at the end to indicate that we're ending this line or this statement. So here we have a double. And a double is a decimal, a decimal number. And so we have the data type double. We have the variable my decimal. We set it equal to the value 1.3, and then we end it off with a semicolon. A Boolean is a true false value. So it could either have the value true or false. A string is a sequence of characters. So we can have it equal to the string pi. Um, and then lastly, we have this player data type. And this is what we saw earlier when we created an object, a player object. So we have player, uh, the type player. This is our variable. And we're creating a new object. Um, so we set this new object to this Luigi variable. There are other data types that I didn't right here, um, but I wrote them on the side here. So there's a float data type that we might use in this tutorial, and that's similar to a double. It just, the range of values that it can accept is smaller. So it's still a decimal value, but it just can't accept as big of numbers. We also have a char data type, and this is just for a single character. So character i or character j. Now we'll go over basic operations in Java. So you can do operations on different variables that you have in Java. So here's an example of that. So we have this new variable called my sum, and it's of int type. And we set that or we assign that to the sum of my int, which we declared before here, and we add it to 10, and then we end the statement with a semicolon. And so my int is the value 5, we add it to 10, so my sum will be 5 plus 10, which is 15. Now there are other operations that we can do like subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and doing the modulo. Other operations that we can do is this plus plus operation. And this is basically a shorthand of writing my sum is equal to my sum plus one. So it basically increments my sum by one, and then it sets my sum to that. So in this case, because my sum was 15, you add it by one, it'll become 16. So my sum is equal to 16. 
There's also this minus minus operator, and this does the same thing, but it subtracts it by one. We can also do operations on um, data types that might not match. So we have a my decimal, which is a double, and a my int, which is an integer. And the way we can do, or the reason why we can do this is because my int gets converted into a double, and then the addition of the two doubles happen, and then it sets my sum to equal to a double. And so this conversion happens, uh, we don't see it, but it happens in the compiler. And then lastly, we have this string um, that we do my string, which was high. And then we do this plus operator. And when you do pluses with strings, it's called a, a concat. And you're basically appending whatever's uh, whatever comes after the plus two, whatever comes before it. So it will be high space Billy, because there's space right here. And we'll set that to my string concat. So another thing I want to go over is typecasting. So we have this my int, which is an integer type. And we want to set this integer, or we want to set this my decimal variable, which is a double type, to this integer. And to make it explicit that we're going to convert this integer into a double, we can do this typecasting. So we can say, turn this integer into a double, and then set it to my decimal. Next, I want to go over control statements. So in Java, one of the control statements that you can use is the if else control statement or the if else statement. And the way this works is you have this if, and if whatever's in here is true, then whatever's inside this curly brace gets executed. If this is false, then it goes to the next else if statement, and it checks if this is true or not. If it's true, it executes. If it's false, it goes to the next one. Um, you can have many else ifs. So you can only have one if and one else. You can have many else ifs. So it can be, you can have another else if here. that check something. We need the curly braces, and then we can execute something in here. And we can have as many else ifs as we want in between the if and the else. And if none of the if or the else ifs are true, then it goes to this else as a default and it executes whatever is in here. Now, when I say true, I mean this statement in here has to be a true statement. So, does my int equal five? If my int is equal to five, then I'll execute this statement. Um, if it's false, then we go to this statement, and I'll check if my int is equal to 6, and so on. There are other comparison operators that we have. So this is the, e uh, the equality operator. We also have the less than, the less than equal to, um, the greater, the greater than or equal to uh, statements. So this is the OR operator here. And what it checks is it checks if one of at least one statement is true. So in here, if we want to check if my int is equal to five or my int is equal to four, we can do it like this. And so if either of these two statements are true, then this whole statement is true 
and we'll execute this. The other one is the AND statement. And this checks if, if both of these statements are true. So if my int is equal to 5 and my int is equal to 4, then this statement will occur. Um, this will never be, this whole statement will never be true because my int could either only be 5 or 4. Right? But if we did something like my decimal is equal to 4, then this could potentially be true.